Welcome everybody to the Destiny Dugout. I'm your host Cruz, member of the three-time world's first team from Elysium, and this is what we've got going on this episode. Check out myself and Vandal's socials, which are in the description box below. Thank you on a personal level for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoy listening, and let us know what you think in the comment section. Now without further ado, let's get this thing started. Welcome to episode 2 of the Destiny Dugout. Back here again with my co-host Vandal. How are What's you doing, up? man? Um, I'm doing. Doing the do, as doing, they say. Do, doing the repo GG. Yep. Uh, use code repo for... Uh... Well, it used to be thirty percent off, but now it's ten. That's so, sad. Halloween sale but, is over. Um, we're your stuff and you're recording on first of November. Eleven fourteen. East Coast people. Coast. Represent. Um, yeah. So you guys already saw what we're talking about. Good. Kind of an extension of the last one, because the, our main topic is going to be the beginning of our state of the game stuff. So that's probably the juicy part of this pod. Yeah, I mean, we're going to go in depth in a lot of things and um, mainly give our perspective on the things that affect kind of us and how it trickles down from there. Yeah, and that's a good way to actually put it, is that, like, our perspective, because ultimately, where you want to use it, or where it has an effect for you, in, in fucking all of the sandbox, is very, like, user-dependent, and what's you, what you look for in it, and how much you get. So, this will be from, again, our perspective, and how we look at it, so we, what, how we look at the damage sandbox and, and build crafting all that sort of stuff. yeah so first off what's new in destiny 2 frankly not much this is uh <laughs> you know later ends of this seasons we we kind of all know how this how this works at this point part of the problem and what we talked about in episode one is how formulaic the uh, seasons have been Honestly, for the last like year and a half, you know, it's, it's really been pace. like, I mean, even it's longer because it's like from Undying, it's been very similar. Like, there's been slight oh, yeah. season changes, but yeah, Shadow Keep on, very similar. So, we are at the slow part of this season. This is the best time to do some Master Keitel farming because your artifact is probably like 20 plus if you play the game actively. If not, the moon could always use some defending. Yep. Um, not so. that we are advocates of it, but I think both of us understand that that is probably the best way to go about it. Mm -hmm. Because I am definitely not going to advocate you to go do moon bounties. No, I'd rather God, you no, go do some other moon activities. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, and as Cruz said, you know, later in the season here, um, ideally right now... You're you're doing that kind of stuff with a small group of people, but things that require large groups like Master King's Fall, um, getting those challenges done, and and really kind of power farming the activities is just going to get harder. It's it's only going to get harder because a lot of people already kind of dipped out. You know, last week and this week the number just keeps dropping because the, the season's coming to an end. They, they, there's no more story, and it's kind of like the wrap up. We're closing it out, obviously. Um, so definitely look to get all your title stuff done if if that's your shtick. Yeah, definitely with the challenges, like since the Oryx challenge came out. This is what I think we're on War Priest challenge now, and I, I don't know. I did it. I did uh, Totems 1 again, but most people yeah. didn't want to do it if I did run at King's Fall. And, uh, yeah, I can't imagine it's going to get any easier, so definitely, you know, take advantage of the power level, but also take advantage of the freshness of the activity. Don't let it linger too long. I'm sure most of you have already taken advantage of that, but for those that haven't, a heed or uh, a word of advice. 
yeah. hidden warding. Um, I think for me, like really all I care about the rest of the season is just trying to get the rest of my reds leveled or finished. So like the dares GL I have to level. Still no purple sword, but to be honest, I don't really care. I'm, yeah, what am I really gonna? Matter. What am I gonna get? Ants eager so I can hold it. <laughs> I don't even know a second longer. Like I'm chilling, man. I don't need to spend the resources on yeah. that. I will. Yeah, no. I'll spend it on something that has a little more gameplay impact. And that's a, a piggybacking off what your goals are. You know, that's another thing to do in the end of the season. Here is start catching up on other things. You know, before the season ends, while you have the free artifact power, and things are just easier. Um, you know, get the the red borders from castellum and do all that other stuff if you're kind of done me personally i finally got my last uh fusion from king's fall so i have every weapon craftable and crafted and i just gotta level a couple more so i'm uh i'm in a good spot right now thank god i don't have you know the dare stuff anymore like lingering behind me because with the when the new season drops I immediately go for those red weapons and having having a multitude of weapons still from other seasons to still get, it's it sucks. Yeah, and I mean connecting off that, we know from last week's TWAB with DSC weapons being the, the first ones to come back from past raids that are gonna be um updated. That's even more yeah. reason or more things you're gonna have to do here. And yeah. I mean that's a nice thing I suppose of each seasonal refresh. Is that they're adding a form of a grind, not necessarily the one we want, but it is something. I'm okay with that. But I, I I don't really want to get left behind. I really wish Bungie would start looking into retroactively doing things. For instance, you Say know, like us players, I have played the game. It, it's not even just us, play, you know, people that are like like us. It's for everyone, right? Because it's 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 a matter of respecting time. You know, you have people that did some DSCs to get a good enough shotgun, and now you're saying, oh, you got you got to get back in there. And not only do you have to get shotguns, but they have to be red borders. You know, good luck. And it's just like it's just going in there to do it all over again, right? And you can make the argument, it's like, well, if we already have something, then you don't need it, so it's not a problem. But it's like that. I don't know. That's a, it's a very that's a very I would call that like a forehead argument, you know, talking about, you know, we're going to talk about re resilience here in a little bit um, and uh, other things. And um, just saying like, oh, just don't use it. Right. Or just don't do X thing that they introduce in the game. It's, it's not an argument that that's not a solution. Yeah. And I mean, I think their reasoning for not having anything retroactive aside from just not having the, I don't know, memory baked into the game is that they want the player base to still be engaged and have something to do, whether or not it's fun or not, you know? Like, by keeping them active and re-grinding, it's like gnawing hunger 3.0. Gotta get oh, it yeah. again. So That was just disrespectful. That was bad. <laughs> Especially, dude, my dr drifter season roll that finally became good and then immediately got sunset. And oh, hey, yeah. hey, there's the exact same roll again. Yeah. Oh my god, that was that arrival season. I mean, well, great. That introduction of reused weapons with the exact same roll pretty tragic. Yeah. So let's just finish this off real quick. We talked about. You know a little bit what we could do in the final stretch of the season. Is there anything you'd hope for? You know, maybe like in the final season. Is it copium to think there might be something at the end? Of um, I don't think so. I mean, we're probably gonna get at at most some very small like stand next to spider and he talks about something, or I don't know, some kind of super small thing. Um, if you're a lore head, all of this is probably great to you. If you if you don't really care particularly about the story or lore, then you know just continue about your business. I don't think anything crazy is gonna happen. They're not gonna release any super amazing. Oh my god, get on the game right now! You need to experience this kind of thing. They just, I mean, I th in my opinion, they've just shown that that's not 
that's not something that they're uh, really focused on doing. That's a very sporadic thing that they're going to do. Usually tie it next to like probably expansion launches or something to the effect of like the Bungie 30th anniversary. You know how that was a big thing. They, they tie it to larger things like that. I mean, seasons are just, you know, cut and paste. They're, you know, little add-ons. They're 10 bucks. Don't yeah. get, we don't get much with 10 bucks in Destiny. Although, hey, 40 bucks. Expansions. Hell there yeah. Um, is there anything... So we'll, we'll probably find out information on... Well, hopefully, what the next season would be. Maybe a, two weeks or a week prior. Um, but looking ahead, is there anything going forward they'd want to see? Knowing that we have a dungeon season. Because for me, I think it's really all about the dungeon. It's like uh, seasonal content. It, I hope it has something that leads to Lightfall, but really it's more about is the dungeon enjoyable, replayable, and worth grinding for the inevitable Lightfall day one. Yeah, I mean, um, a big part of the dungeon, at least from our perspective, so I'll start from kind of the top down here, looking at our perspective, dungeon being replayable and all that stuff that's you know fine and dandy and fun what really is the big ticket item that we're i think most of us are looking at is is the boss easily farmable on master um because if so then you've replaced the keitel farm for artifice armor and now the dungeon is one of the best activities in the game right um and you know with that being said if it's if it's not easily farmable it, that's gonna play a huge part in terms of replayability at least for you know i think most people in the kind of upper upper end and if sort of if we find it unplayable not unplayable but you know hard to kind of really sink your teeth into it and keep doing it over and over again um then i can only imagine uh people that don't have a lot of time and stuff because typically those activities that that aren't the first option into to replaying over and over again to farm like grasp is a great example right grasp on the first run through was was it was fun it was enjoyable you know, it, was, it was kind of it was fine you know yeah it was it was a good, we had a good laugh you know getting killed by traps and stuff um but once you start to do it more and more after your you know let's say third or fourth clear you get to the servitor room oh dear god you know that's the last thing you want to do that that room just takes forever you know and then boss also takes a while because the boss has got a lot of health uh unless you're kind of optimizing there a little bit then you know you're probably not going to hit that one phase and even the ogre too you know so everything in there it's just it's kind of tedious which you would think like we would really enjoy that but if there's nothing to get out of it then you know, like artifice armor and stuff, you know, we're not going to do it. And you're probably not going to see a lot of other people farming it either. So it really depends on the encounter design, the the base mechanic that they brought in. Duality's base mechanic with the bell was awesome. I love that idea. Now, it killing you randomly, not great. Yeah, agreed. But not ideal. I think I think the mechanic itself is very, very cool. I think it's very intuitive. Um and it's simple and it can drive the entire dungeon in terms of you know the encounters and even getting from encounter to encounter you know i thought it was really cool how they did that mm -hmm. so um but in terms of the next season obviously the dungeon artifice armor um the weapons that we're getting with the next dungeon will most likely be craftable assuming they follow mm. sort of the duality the duality I don't kind know of a the new duality weapons weren't. It was just the reprisal ones that were thrown. I think I'd this is. I'd be surprised if they didn't, but then again. I think this is one of the bungee things where they're like, we want some things to be earnable. For some reason, raid weapons are in there. Yeah. Or, that are, uh, that, like, you can just get all, like, well, you know, after just playing. But dungeons seems to be that, like, end game aspect that they don't want people to be able to get everything from just by playing. 
it's like they're 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 in their minds they're thinking of it as kind of a mini endless loop right yeah they're like that's the replayable let's go farm the dungeon some more and uh i don't like it but i just think that's their uh their plan their layout that they do yeah i mean and and i sort of hope they don't i don't know i mean obviously depending on what the season comes with because you know um with castellum and haunted we got four uh menagerie weapons back um and they've shown that they can read that's how they're i guess looking to you know without reaching too far here to repurpose some of these things that we sort of lost and bring them back into the game to sort of anti-sunset them um i don't entirely agree with it because i would have rather had you know the complete leviathan space than you know whatever the castellum is right now but um i'm surprised they didn't do something like that this season but maybe they're only doing it with dungeons dungeon seasons possibly mm-hmm. right i mean with i think that'd be seasons, a decent way to kind of suffice the difference between a dungeon and raid yeah and and with dungeon seasons um you know part of those returning weapons will be uh from whatever area let's say we get a new area kind of like castellan or whatever um but they might throw a sprinkle of a couple of the weapons in the dungeon itself along with the the own dungeon weapons right so cuz duality only gave us three weapons i believe right um three, yeah, three uh, no, unique four, unique four, weapons for the pulse the gl the lfr the GL. and the smg yeah. four unique ones yeah the gl that i would love to get but would never get and and along with that they sprinkled in uh, the two menagerie weapons um, yeah so we ended up getting six weapons which is pretty standard we got uh we got what two of each slot Am I crazy? Um, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, two of each. Yeah, yeah, there I you think go. you're right. So look for that balance again. Um, last thing, dungeon spot. Where would you? Pop your um. Head? Oh man, I I almost instinctively said Dreaming City. All right, there you go. That count. That's it. <laughs> Dreaming City. Um, I I don't know why, but I I, th- I feel like Shadow Throne is great, but I don't I just love the space. No, I do think there know. needs to be more Dreaming City stuff because like Dreaming City always seemed to just attach itself to the Shattered Throne to be like or like not, uh, Shattered Throne, but the Ascendant Plane as like the extra scary kind of area. So it'd be cool to have like a dungeon in the Dreaming City like caves. That would be super. Um, aside from the basic DSC answer, I actually th- was just thinking anything Black Armory related, because I just want those weapons to be the things that get returned. Oh, I want man. there to be, I want there to be a secret forge on Europa. That's like, I don't know, somewhere on Europa. Honestly, I don't care. It could be in the Fallen area, the Icy the area, the Braytek Bray area, forge. any of those. Like, I, I just want something on Europa, but like with, um... You know those weapons. I want Kindled Orchid back, man. You know I want to. I want to mm-hmm. void 140 to craft for PV. I want. The, I want the. Uh, I was telling Vile this. I want the. Um, uh, you know, like the collect them all, like meme of like Gravity yeah. Falls or Thanos. I want them all with the hand cannons, with explosive one for all fire. What yeah. I want them all, man. I want. Ex- <laughs> I want explosive firefly in every single hand cannon. I love that combo. It feels it's just so great. Combo. Oh, um, I want to rant about this because I talked to Vile about this, and I even made a Twitter thing about you know, incandescent and how like, I hate it when it's not paired with like a build because on on its own, I just think I just think it's worse than Firefly. But I can't; I have to save it for another time. I don't agree with you there. <laughs> yeah, well, but... you, gotta, you gotta save it. Hmm. Sorry. Right. We'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Another Let day. us know in the comments what what you think of incandescent. I mean, I think incandescent's fine, but I just think Firefly is a better version of it, unless you're building into ignitions with Scorch. I I think at at face value, I'll, when I think of incandescent, I think of enhanced, just strictly enhanced. 
right? Yeah, um, that's fair. It's the only ones I really use. So when I think of strictly enhanced, you know, and I also think of um, the fact that just killing them makes that explosion, whereas Firefly, you need the headshot, which usually isn't an issue, but hey, man. I mean, sure, on like mini tool, bullets. that's fine, but using um, the raid hand cannon without Firefly and max reload, I, th I find is very difficult. That thing reloads. I, I just can't. It's still so slow unless I have a, a reloader on it. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I guess I never really thought about it too hard because I put a I, on mine. I put a reload masterwork. Well, I mean, I'm full reload. Mag. Yeah, but I need a loader on it still. Oh, it's. Oh, huh. for for me, for me, it feels fine. But that beats their own, right? Yeah. Um, I just think. Um, last thing on this before we start talking about the important stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like people forgot about Fate Bringers great role really early on yeah. of explosive firefly and they're like oh let's ditch it i'm like this thing is literally just a solar version of fate bringers fate bringers still not like the best tank in it. i mean i don't think like, it's now but it, might it was be the best it was kinetic. the best it was the best before you know people i would rather use that than ace of spades but ace kind of has the cheating 40 percent now this is getting way too deep because I don't want to start talking about the stupid. <laughs> that's that's next. That's, actually, we might end up talking about it. I don't know because we're going to talk a little bit more about the weapon sandbox here too. So we could honestly, yeah, yeah we'll honestly we will talk about that there. Um, yeah, we'll we'll rope it in there somehow. So switching topics now, I'll uh, I'll kick this off with the beginning of our state of the game stuff. This will probably trickle into at least another episode. Probably two, but we might like leave this. You know, we might like touch on it now and then come back and three hit it up again and talk about a different aspect. To start, I'm gonna bring up weapon stuff and primarily based around boss damage because that is something that I feel is so simple and like honestly it's like a monopoly. Like, you just LFR everything because mm -hmm. anything else is just worse. And it's not necessarily just because everything else does less damage, but the content and design is so geared towards what an LFR does. LFRs, simply, are basically the Whisper meta, but with more damage. And they're not exotic. Because with 4 times and Triple Tap, Vice Stinger, you know, any combination of whatever you've got there. You can shoot for like 30 seconds. And if you're out of ammo, you can just swap to Arbalest and you're still like crushing what any really other option can do. This is also combined with why does every single boss like the best way to do it is the same way. It's so frustrating that this sweet spot of a timer that I feel like Sanctified kind of had, and even like Atrex 2-bit, Atrex, if you want to call her that, um, by being a little bit more condensed. You know, Sank on day one was a shock to us. You know, he popped up and we're like, oh, he's damageable, shoot, sh uh, he's down. <laughs> that's it? Yep. We did like 10% of his health, and it's like, you that's blinked. it? What? Exactly. He blinked and it was over. And over time, we got, you know, more adapted to the how the fight worked and how to prep and like you know if you're with six people you have three people aiming at where he's gonna you know pop out from his little animation and then you just start whamming on him he goes up shoot 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 all right good you did like 40 percent of his health pretty quickly and you're not necessarily getting the benefit of seven fourth times procs but then you go to like oryx or Golgoroth or Airtaker or like even, Templar even Rolk. or even Rolk. Rolk. Rolk is super long too. Yeah. Rolk is a very long damage phase. You have a divinity, you can just you hit fire your linear. Literally just just hit fire the divinity bubble as he's chasing people around. Um I'll touch on Rolk in a second, but yeah, it just feels like every single one of these more modern designs. I and I know like King's Fall came up before but I still think you can change up the timings 
you know, orcs didn't have a damage phase before. They chose to make it this, sit here for 30 plus seconds and wail on a boss that doesn't do anything. He, he reminds I... me a bunch of IP if you didn't have to move. See, I am of the, uh, I might be an outcast here for this with, with this opinion, but I like damage amped damage phases where you had to work at a mechanic and then get into damage phase. And then depending on how well you did or how well you can coordinate said mechanic, you know, greatly affects your damage. I mean, I know with infinite whisper, we were brute forcing IP, but if you did IP right, you barely used any ammo at all because you were just getting crazy boosted by matching the the two uh -huh. symbols with the other person. And, you know, even like Callus, you know, shooting the skulls, doing that really well. Um, granted, it it does technically make things easier, but I think it just it just allows you to play the game more how you want because if you do the mechanics really well, you can literally put on any heavy you want. Like, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to be so damage boosted that you're killing this boss. No, and I 100% right? I agree with that. Like, um, I think, uh, I do think there are portions of the player base that would think that's um, a hot take. But I, I do think, like, most endgame players like that incentivization of doing well in a encounter and then kind of getting rewarded with it for more damage. So, like, the callous skulls, you getting to 100, yeah, you're going to whale on them. The IP, you match your symbols really quickly, again, you're just going to destroy. Mm -hmm. um, at least when it comes to our weapon choices, the duration of all these recent bosses are very similar. And I'm not sure what Bungie expects us to use when, again, this is very div related, but the simplest option is also the best option. I'm not quite sure why um like uh uh not that we have you know gower on phase one in the game right now but i firmly believe with div even with its nerf state we're still just using lfrs and we're just body shotting because the damage output is so high and you're super efficient on ammo how is um like a shotgun setup not the strongest on a boss like that or Rolk again with Div, it's very different. But this guy has these very difficult to hit crit spots. It's moving a lot. How isn't just using a rocket or a high body damage based weapon not the most effective? Everything is just so simplistic and samey. And it's always LFRs. It's so boring. I mean, you brought up the high body damage. Sleeper has some of the highest body damage. And I mean, for Rolk, if you don't have a div, unironically, just put on sleeper. Like you don't hit the crit, you're still gonna do a crap ton of damage mm -hmm. with sleeper. Yeah, you know? and it's an LFR. It just goes back to your point. The difference, I think, sleeper actually is designed pretty well. It is just in a situation where, because of div and because of easy to hit crit spot bosses, there isn't much use to it because you will just run out of ammo. The and, fact that and, it doesn't have triple tap or four times or whatever Whisper has, you know, it's just like these things that prolong it. You know, a bunch of reserves for free. And and I think, like, linear is, yeah, they're the safest option, but I don't think it's the linear themselves. I think it's literally just triple tap and fourth time for trying. Because the fact that those weapons are allowed to, sp like, create ammo out of thin air as a legendary, um, you know, you have Kata with six in the mag and you have two four times procs. You know, you're shooting 10 Kata. That's four free Kata rounds in a single each mag, right? Like that's obscene how much free ammo you're making, right? Um, and I think their damage and everything about them could stay the same. It's just triple tap and fourth times needs to pull from reserves. Because otherwise, they they are in a completely unbalanced. It's not even remotely close. I think the they heavens. could just drop base reserves and keep them the same. But essentially, that's kind of you know, it's essentially the same um, change. It's just do you want to have a lower floor with the same type of ceiling? Because obviously, if you just lower the reserves, that 
nerfs them more because if you don't proc it, you don't have the reserves to really. Um, but it's. I don't know. I just think. A... I just think, in terms of spawning ammo, you know, you have Whisper that can do it and should be the best at doing it in those long damage phases, and it's just getting outclassed by two different LFRs. Yeah, but I, I mean, Whisper's damage just isn't great because it doesn't have a firing line, and like in the case of reeds, just <laughs> free on the light, you know. I mean, and and I, I just think I just think as a heavy weapon, being able to kind of cheat all that ammo for free with basically no effort, right? Like if 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 triple tap had a, had a different requirement, and I couldn't even tell you what it would be, you know, like <laughs> I I don't know, hedge headshotting like three different enemies, and then you refund a bullet, you know, of course it's going to be so much worse. But the fact that its only requirement is just three quick precision hits, and you get a free bullet, you're already doing that. You're it, it's already just a win more condition on the gun. I also think part of it is um, there's not much reason to consider anything else. Uh, I feel like Clown Cartridge is supposed to be like the alternative that's safer. The issue is partly with boss design as well as Divinity, these crit spots have made Triple Tap and Fourth Times a Charm incredibly overvalued as perks themselves. You're not going around shooting Rolk without a, without a Div and getting consistent like triple tap and four times procs. Trust me, I've tried. You, you're lucky if you get two while he's coming straight at you to slam you. You don't, you don't get mm -hmm. that opportunity. But you have a, you have a div or a boss like Oryx. I think Oryx is a fine example of a boss. It's not like you can't have bosses that you just kind of sit there. Um, I think um, it's just about adding the variety, adding the variety of duration adding the variety of total health and what's expected from the group or player, and then adding variety of what makes sense to use on the enemy are all things that should be kind of considered when designing a sand like a weapon sandbox or geared around boss damage and what boss DPS should look like in a certain encounter. I feel like right now most of the boxes are the same. And that's kind of why, like, the game, at least endgame wise, feels pretty stale. Because even though, like, again, like, I just think of. There's so many examples where why aren't shotguns the best? Like, duality kind of walks up to your freaking face. And we're going to use an LFR on her. Like, that is yeah, so strange still... to me. Like, what the heck? How yeah. can't you just run Acrius and that be the best thing? That's literally what it should be good at. Right? You know, you know. I just had an idea, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I feel like this is this is a very weird take. Um, imagine if Weaken still did the fifteen percent right debuff, right global debuff, and it only stayed fifteen for precision, but for explosives and body shot damage, it went to thirty. Yeah, I mean, I think that gives a lot more value to like Izzy rocket swaps. You know, because you're just getting value off the body yeah. damage, which I think again is fine. I don't think I think Izzy Rocket should be one of the strongest combos in the game, pretty much forever, because it's evolving two weapons. Anything I think that evolves more weapons should be better. The, Ideally, the, the, yeah. the skill ceiling. Not saying it's high, but the air quote skill ceiling is higher up, and therefore should have more effectiveness. Right. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, I I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think what would be an interesting meta, you know, this would be crazy. You know, you, you dump rockets into a boss and everybody just jumps forward and they all just start plant a well at his feet and then just start shotgunning. You know, trench bro shotgunning a boss like back in the old days, fire days. You know, I I think there should be more. Like you, they they talked about why they nerfed snipers forever ago, and it was because it was too safe. You could play too safe far mm -hmm. away. We're we're doing the same thing. We can sit probably even farther with our yeah, bars, even further, even closer. Uh, uh and we're and, probably more safe because of the sandbox changes. 
and and the LFR like the the zoom is is nothing compared to a sniper. Like it's never an issue. Whereas if you're point blank with a sniper, it can be a little uncomfortable. Dude, I don't even think people understand the skill gap between using like a rapid fire sniper and an LFR. Like rapid yes, fire snipers, sh sh go shoot, Jeez. go shoot Cali in the head with no div on a rapid fire, and see how fast you shoot. Mm -hmm. how, like that is one of the most difficult things there is in the game. Oh, yeah. and it isn't even good. Like it's not even okay. It's it's bad. Like it's not good damage. It's horrible. Output. Yeah, and and you know I think that there should be cons to both. Obviously, getting right into a boss's face. You know you're put in danger, but if you strat and you you know you plan for it, then you should be able to reap the benefits and more by getting right up on a boss and shotgunning the crap out of them. You're talking know? about like the strats of like the pros and cons of being oh you're close to it now now it's more deadly, which obviously makes sense. Now you're gonna for, now you have a reason to bring in a commander wall bubble thingy. You know yeah. what I'm saying the bit the big forty percent weapons of light, so you can be more protected. Like it, it's just, all of this is really to serve. The concept of making the game more and having more reason to use different aspects of the game. The sandbox is so simplistic, and this is just talking about weapons and counter design for bosses, where mm -hmm. we should be able to use like four different setups, and they should all be equivalently meta depending on what type of encounter it is of course and the encounter is going to dictate riven is a very simplistic boss the same way oryx is the same way honestly like caretaker is plates but you know we, we have examples like rogue that are very different and we still use the same thing and and it can go even deeper like making a chest resist mod a literal like physics resist mod basically where you know, it would probably cost them, cost some more. You know, might be a little bit costly, but you, when you're next to a boss and they stop, you're not going anywhere. It's not going to move you at all. You know, and that that like plays into the, you know the the allowing for different things and not completely like because because right now you could go to most bosses and you could shotgun them to death. It'll take a little while. I mean, with the changes to Acrius, I mean Acrius is actually not bad. Um, but you still have to manage the stomps, and then there's a lot of people kind of jammed together. And, it, and I mean, it, even it's, it's during the not... fight, you're using a shotgun. We all know that shotguns are not the most ideal weapon to use during an encounter, right? Yeah, and and it's just not that much better. Like, it's not better at all, actually, than just using an LFR, and that's the problem. You know, and if again, you're, you're going to invest dangerous weapon versus safe weapon. Yeah, you know you're gonna if you're if you're gonna invest in 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 having that be your strategy, it should you shouldn't feel like you're effectively throwing like trolling, because it's just so far behind. Just sitting back and just plinking away at the boss's head with Kato, you know, it uh, it should it should be more like in line with it, and you got to plan for it, but you'll get it done possibly better. Ultimately, at least for me, what I would love the game to have is a meta that's not defined around complete damage output, but rather what makes the most sense given the encounter and content that we're playing in. And let that be more the dictator of what makes sense. Then you just I just think you just build into more of a variety. If you've if you have five things that all kind of do the same thing, but this one's just better being close because it's easier and this one's better at being far because it's easier that that's that can be enough of a reason to, to use one versus the other even though they did the yeah. same damage yeah oh. um and just talk about that knockback mod you could even tie it to a charge of light thing or when a war mind cell is near you take less have like less aim flinch and don't get pushed back like that would oh, be yeah. cool you can make it more deep than just clicking it on because I, I understand like that I think to balance it you'd have to make it expensive and I don't know if I mean, honestly the best way to do it which is probably the way a lot of things should be done add in the way you're talking about make it a chest mod make it cost 4 make a yep. war mine cell mod for 2 cost 
has a higher condition to get the effect, but it also costs less to build into. Yep. Right? Because then it's so like, it's like well, then I'm wagering. What's what do I value more? Do I value the cost and the ease, uh, or or the the difficulty of making it, or do I value the ease, um, but also reducing maybe my build slots because now I can't have a recov mod in, or something else in yeah. the combat mods. We actually our second topic of this is pretty mod heavy so that's a pretty nice natural yeah, transition good segue. yeah um because again I'll, I'll just start this off with a quick little spiel we have pretty much only only for like a little bit i want to say um maybe a bit during splicer but like a little bit before i have ever had a mod setup with all the mods in the game, combat slot mods, so like the far ones, so everyone knows what we're talking about, where two different types have been good. And by that, I mean Chargers Light and Warmind Cells. There was a point in time where it was they were both good. They both made sense to have a build into. This was kind of before Warmind Cells completely took off, which was pretty much like dry, right during Splicer um, and a little bit before that's when they were like everywhere. Rivals was definitely when they started to get more nice though because of Kellos coming back. Yep. Um But right now we have Elemental Well mods. I remember when they came out and I was like, fuck, these things suck. I hate them. They're so bad. Yeah. They I spawn on their enemies. I, like no seeking muscles and nothing. Oh, this is terrible. I put one on and I was like, okay, let's see. It says it gives ability energy back. So I killed something and I went and I picked it up and it was like a pixel a pixel my ability went up and i was like no this isn't right there's no way damn i just spent <laughs> and then i i, my I tested some of the the time based ones and i was like four seconds what like 10 like 10 sec that's it i think uh um in default tenacity is font of might terrible font of might used to be five seconds yeah uh default and it used to not yeah. stack with any um yeah. normal like uh character buffs also spell or anything you could stack it with rampage or one for all but in 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 most cases you pick up the well and and by the time you get to do damage you're at like three seconds left yeah. like with just five like that's insane like how does it how did this even how, or people the who thought process here oh no this is like before lost where like the stasis ones came in and that's when we got time dilation and supreme well maker and that was the season where like the 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 elemental well mods really took off, but before this, even before Splicer, there there was nothing. You'd run elemental ordinance and font of wisdom or something, and compared to like anything like war mod sales, not, they're terrible. Then mm -hmm. Splicer comes out, you get things like explosive well maker, well of life, reaping well maker. I believe that's when every in the, the like the arc one when melee kills and well ions like that's where each of those I'll say like the two so the two solar ones the two void ones the two arc ones the main I'll say elemental base one yeah that weren't like the the base melee well made. and that's when they started to take more or get game more ground I remember testing well of life pretty early on that season before the fog one and i was like it, i think it has a purpose like i think it's pretty good like you have something shooting at you and you just kind of have that constant um almost um bernstein effect you know obviously it's not as strong but just throwing a nade and getting it that's pretty good anarchy is yeah. also really good ignition goes is really good all of those make the same solar well i even used it in like the day one because i was like this has a purpose um by the contest clear i already took or the challenge clear i already took it off i wasn't gonna it make a difference it. no it made sense to just go with normal full out just four mind cell build yeah. um which, you know kudos for me for beat. trying it but it's it is tough to beat that um and granted i don't think those mods are Zeno. that bad but yeah it's xenos rage um it Raph, is crazy it, it, it fire team medic you'd run that like core it was yeah. it was quite you insane. Shoot, you shoot a goblin, you spawn a cell, pop that, and then a cell spawns somewhere else on the map. You know, and it was just 
It's a freebie, total freebie. Yeah, you blow up that, it kills the goblin across, it killed enough of them, so it made it, you know, the chaining was incredible. Granted, mm -hmm. still not actually as powerful as we are right now, if anyone didn't know. But Which then is crazy to think about. We get to the lost stuff, like I said, that's where the rest of them came out, and I don't think they were really quite meta yet, but then by the time Vow came out, it was already clear that Reed's was one of, if not the best thing. You know, we didn't really use it that much because we did. We were still in the Izzy Rocket G, or the um, the Arbalist is about a one on Rolk because of its high total. Like you have a ton of ammo, it's easy to use, fight, it's efficient, it's good. After that, like pretty much day one, where a lot of top groups were using Supreme. Now we're at a point where they are genuinely the only thing really should ever consider. I think the only thing that makes sense is to run uh, outside of like the normal stuff of elemental wells is elemental charge and high energy fire because you can get two stacks just by picking it up and with how strong abilities are now your uptime on high energy fire is probably as good as it's ever been aside from maybe committing to like double blast radius with like it's that yeah. good of your uptime so what we're in now is this similar to the weapon sandbox this very stale mod setup which is why i feel like a lot of these builds don't have the diversity actually to make them even qualify as builds they like, they 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 need to do an overhaul and they need to start consolidating some of these mods together because we're i think we're well past the whole solar grenade arc melee void super base things like i think that is archaic in my opinion like it it needs to go um for instance if you're running uh, elemental ordinance right it should part of the mod should be spawning with grenades and then picking up wells gives you slightly more grenade energy as part of the mod right it, this whole having to run you know elemental ordinance uh, the what's the the solar the one cost one called um, um i don't remember but i know what you're talking well of about ordinance yeah it's called well of ordinance yeah exactly and this solar thing is a, essentially the you, what should be paired with elemental ordinance is what you're saying they should just be combined yes and same with the 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 melee arc one, one. Yeah. yeah yeah and and um and honestly like you could do that with like reaping if you wanted to activating a class ability reaping and well up. of utility should be combined yeah there's almost no reason for them to be separate. It's it's just to to me it's just bloating. That they just intentionally bloated the mods to keep people from making like even okay, even if you consolidate these mods and you make some, you know, you, you put together some builds, it it won't even be that much stronger, but it's just it's just better. It's just a healthier mod setup all around. You know, because half the time you have to have a mod to make the wells. You have to have a mod to utilize the wells, ideally. And um, I, in most scenarios, you run Seeking Wells because I don't know if anybody's used Elemental Wells without Seeking. It's really annoying. It definitely you know? is. I actually <laughs> mostly run it without because I want the um, usually the second way to make them. And yeah, sometimes if it's not something where I can genuinely um, consciously like go towards, it, having it is just terrible. Yeah, not having any. So and 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 without seeking wells, if you're sitting in the back of the map with the you know starfire fusion build, and you're you know lobbing these bombs that adds and stuff, you're making all these wells. Um, not only do you have to go get them, you have to get right on top of them. Whereas with seeking, you get a little bit of play there. You get a little bit of leeway, and also it helps with. You know, as you're playing, it's less focusing. Like, okay, where's the nearest well? And it just kind of comes to you, and it, and it just hits you, mm -hmm. right? Um, and typically, a lot you have two. I'll correct myself. You have two ways to generate wells, typically, right? Unless you have a build heavily focused into either grenade or melee spam. And if you're using elemental armaments, I'm sorry. I know they up the chances of, of its spawn rate, but it's just not practical. You know. As your as your main generator, definitely. And then not. you have I think it has to be ability based. One, then you have one, maybe two ways, two benefits 
from using the wells and you know the well of ordinance for instance with just one you get like slightly more grenade energy the, the whole idea of those mods is they want you to stack them for some reason bungie's whole thought process is they want you to run elemental ordinance and they want you to run four well of ordinances yeah <laughs> along with it okay <laughs> Like that's Sick that's build. their thought process. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, no. Let's go. That's I got twenty percent more nade energy, and I literally don't have any other benefit other than throwing my yes, nade to get a exactly. little bit more of a nade. Exactly. You know, and and it's it, they need to consolidate some of these things, and and I'll even I'll even say they should go as far as to either combine some of these one cost mods, these kind of low effort mods into their parent mods or just put elemental armaments or elemental armaments with like fonts of might for instance and then put the grenade and melee well maker together right and just call it ability well maker killing anything with an ability makes a well of that element right just simple as that yeah connecting to your well of ordinance build i talking about that it's really sick by the way um that's something that came up to mind. Curious, we can kind of have a little discussion on this. With the emphasis of building and build crafting from Bungie it's themselves, wanting to, you know, implementing loadouts and stuff like that, there's definitely a route that they want the game to have more depth in, to be like more of a core feature. Is it fair to say that that's where more power fantasy you should come from or is it better the way it is now where that's more tailor made subclass or exotic thoughts hmm because i'll I'll just go first so i can give you time to think about this yeah um i think it actually probably isn't fair even though it's what i'd like it to do. because i think that's a little bit too much depth as your main mechanic at least the way that mods are right now how many we have and like if there's three different types like what the new player comes in what do they want to build into i don't know like what's a war mine cell what's a part of light okay like it takes a lot to really kind of understand for us we've been through all of their heydays and when high energy fire came out with sundial stuff um it was like cool like now we have a way to have this like a uh, I don't know more unique character based class based way to get some form of benefit. Oh, protective light! I do this and I get more resistance. If that becomes the core of the game, I just think it's too much early on. But I do think having more weight on it and less on our base power. So instead of Arc 3.0 touch of thunder nades doing so much more damage with part of inmost. Maybe there's a way to buff nade damage through grabbing elemental wells that match your subclass. And that's a way to have like a really high powered nade rather than it being so simplistic, which I think right now is a little too simplistic for how powerful we are. I think it's a, I think it's a fair way to nerf us without making it too much. So th the way I understood what you, what you were saying is you're saying that the game right now is a bunch of one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus two plus one plus one right it's all these very very minute elements right? as far as the very... mods go yes uh but our subclass is more like a plus five yeah and that. you're saying and you're saying the mods um should and could be more of like a plus four plus five plus three plus four i think should deal. be the two to four range uh okay. if we're using a one to five range yeah. Um uh I would like it to be like a four to five because obviously I love that aspect of games. Like I love these games when you can really sink in time to something that's very powerful that's unique to what you enjoy doing. But yeah, I think the two to four range and then make your subclass almost a standard three, just to make it a little bit more balanced between what we get by default and then what kind of power we have to almost earn by using these i see what you're saying it would be that'd be interesting because you're effectively saying having mods become almost the same power level as like fragments right yeah i think i think a fragments is 
a good thing because that's like I think right now that's about where I think the power could be. And uh, yeah, honestly, like some of them are like having like a time dilation font. I think is is as powerful as a weakened nade fragment. To be honest. Then again, I also think yeah, it's, it's a little broken because of stasis specifically. But um, yeah. that's that, I think that's a good level. If um our general subclass abilities were to kind of balance the power a little bit. Working hmm, theory. Yeah. Just uh something I thought of. Just because I you know, I feel like certain parts of build don't matter, you know? Which another segue. I'm I'm on fire today. <laughs> I, I've got these. <laughs> Why builds matter. Rolling. This is the next topic we have, which is where, where where do they find the most value? Where does a good build get value over something that's just thrown together? Let's let's use your well of ordnance build that Bungie oh, likes God. to oh, just God. as an example. Um, and compare it to like uh one of my like staple builds. I almost throw on everything. Um, you can write it down if you want. It's explosive well maker. Well of Life, Time Dilation, I get more Well of Life time, Font of Might, and then either you could throw in Seeking Wells here, or I usually like to do a second way to make charges, because I usually like just using Explosive Well Maker, and I can always pair it with Well of Life. But if I want to do um, Well of Ordnance, or not Well of Ordnance, Jeez, got me thinking about that. Elemental <laughs> Ordnance or Melee Wellmaker, if I'm not on Solar, then that way I can have that benefit of font. So th that's just one of my tried and true end game all around type build. Because I can get a lot of different benefits. I can have a matching um, G Horn if I'm honoring Solar, like just damage boost that has an increased dur duration, as well as. Uh, 10 seconds of all of life so just like pretty easy way to have like constant healing with, with dilation is 13 13 there you go yeah um, i mean and, and to, to kind of break it down you know for anybody here that's a little you know mod uh, uh noob when it comes to mods which is fine um you know explosive all maker we, we talked a lot about it but i don't know if we ever really kind of said what some of these do um to us, they're very self-explanatory, but just a quick rundown. Explosive Wall Maker, you can use... It works with Wither Horde. It actually works with most grenades, um, including a Vortex Grenade. It counts as spawning an Explosive Well Maker, a Solar Well. Um, like I said, well, uh, Wither Horde will do it. Uh, Chain Reaction will do it. Gallarhorn, obviously. Like uh, an Ignition will spawn it, too. Um, explosive rounds on primaries does proc explosive well maker it's it's not easy to do but it does happen um firefly and, yeah Weapon. firefly dragonfly basically also anything that creates an explosion will create this and that's why like personally i think it's one of the strongest ones yep. because it's always a, it's a very um vast odd in terms of what can create it and Getting a solar it, it, thing to just match with the well of life is very synergistic. Yeah, it's a it's a perfect neutral game setup because you just have a stasis piece of armor, two uh, solar pieces of armor, and you can run that with any subclass you want, and you'll be making solar wells on any subclass, even with stasis. You know, using shatter damage, it spawns it too. So you know, it it's just like the all around base like elemental well build that mm -hmm. most people typically use so we've got that build which is what i'm talking about you can even just extend it to this like stasis shards font of might elemental time dilation because that's a pretty basic stasis buff damage thing that you need um going through that again elemental time dilation is going to increase your timer on font you're then going to run three more fonts and then you're going to run stasis shards is any stasis shard from like a glacier nade or anything like that that gets made is going to count as a well so you just pick one up one of those up and bam you've got i think 20 seconds of stasis damage which is just insane for any boss damage setup because all you have to do is throw a nade down and you have it 
and even when you're by yourself too yeah it's it's very for real it's so Um, good just and you you'd be surprised how good a little passive damage buff like that is every every class has a way to make them you know their 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 own you know um shards hunters is a little bit more difficult than everyone else um but being able to just cycle that on your own and you could even swap one of those fonts of mites for or um you could run just one fonts of might and then run elemental charge with uh, a high energy fire right um and you could have high energy fire plus font granted you won't have it for the full 20 seconds you'll have it for something like 13 but having that plus font and just being able to just kind of run that easy neutral game on stasis is incredibly strong. So yeah, we've got that. And then we have this other garbage setup where you're just like going to gain, I'll even give it a modest 40% of nade energy cooldown build, where all you're doing is throwing a nade, making a well and picking it up. That's your elemental ordinance, bunch of well of ordinance. Yeah, which, I mean, you could make the argument that, oh, you just use that with uh, what Verity's Brow. And you're like, oh, you get a ton of value there. It's like, oh, well, you don't even need those mods with Verity's Brow, actually. Because you'll probably get your nade back. It doesn't really, it's funny. Part. Those types of builds, not that really. But if someone were to invest in that, they're almost a way to subsidize the need for having the exotic that gets you your nade energy back. It's like you wouldn't want to use it with a Verities or a Contra, like mm-hmm. a Heart of Inmost, because it's honestly you don't need it. You already have a way to get your ability back. You should almost use it to help alleviate a melee base build. But the thing is, you should have already just been investing in a melee build base build to further incentivize the melee, right? It's kind of this weird position where I think, like, from, like, a basic understanding, it makes sense to you. But if you were to look at it, you should always invest in what you're trying to do the most. You want to, like, maximize your one thing rather than round out your weakness. At least in a game like Destiny, that usually makes more sense. It's to invest in the most powerful thing. Even stat-wise, we do this. We go for max resil, max recovery, and max disp because those are your three strongest stats. Like nobody can say anything else. They they're the most strong. It only doesn't matter anymore because how they changed it. And strength, mm-hmm. unless you have a build that's based upon a non refundable melee like hammers, um, that you need max uptime for. It doesn't make sense to have that. Like you wouldn't even want to invest that so it really just comes down to three stats because you're not going to consider mobility at least no i I don't care about straight speed um and these all matter whenever you're doing anything hard too like this is these are small differences but they're the differences that allow a good player to solo flawless a dungeon like third try and Soul flawless it on their 15th try. And, and I'm not even like making that. I've like seen it before. The moment you allow these meta mods and setups, how much more it, impact you have <laughs> in endgame, like in terms of survivability it and plays, output. It plays the game for you. <laughs> like it really does. Like you can have just like a full setup with a good exotic that's based around healing with a well of life and damage set up. And you. It, the game is, I don't know, what would you say, 30% easier? 50% uh, easier? It's 50, somewhere around there. 50. About 50. I mean, if you're ever doing anything hard, that's where these current builds, at least, you know, the better ones, make a lot of sense. Of course, in the day one, our damage output is pretty much the most important thing if you look at. Yep. Whenever it comes to a boss... Yeah, uh, if it's not a if it's a if it's like a i don't know what's uh what's exhibition or what's what's the third encounter for vow is that what it's called exhibition yeah i think yeah if it's something like that you don't need to invest in your full stasis but that's when you'd run the other thing that we were talking about 
and assuming the game doesn't break like it did on day one, you're just doing things easier. And ultimately, in a day one, your goal is to do the thing the best that is also the easiest slash most consistent. So anything that aids in survivability for an encounter like that is probably the most important thing. And then for a damage-based thing, whatever maxes out your damage. Not necessarily your DPS. I hate when people say it's like your DPS. It's not always your DPS. A lot of the time it's your damage output, aka your total. That's a side range. Yeah. And I mean, and to to go back to what you know what Cruz was talking about, um, it's really uh the way I like to look at it is um you need in your build, you need to find your engine. Right? Um you need that that the less the less pieces it takes to make your engine, the better your build is, right? For instance, Titans right now have Heart of Inmost Light. That chess piece in and of itself is the engine. You need nothing else. You you genuinely don't need anything else with Heart of Inmost Light. Um, it really does everything for you. Like all those mods and getting your abilities back and even damage amping your abilities, Heart of Inmost does it on its own, right? Um, and Basically, once you determine what your engine is, then everything else should ideally stem from there, and that way you don't get stuck in in you know like a dead zone in terms of your build, right? Because you could have this is a big issue with uh, energy converter builds. And if you don't know what energy converter does, it takes your charge with light stacks, and when you throw your nade, if your super is below fifty percent, it will give you super energy depending on how many stacks you have up to 50 percent right so if you pop your super and you have five stacks of charge with light and you throw your nade you're going to get somewhere between 40 and 50 it's not exact but it's somewhere in that range instantly right well the issue with that build is you typically only have one way to make things to get you there and you have to run a bunch of mods to get you to to hold those stacks and then you have to make sure that you have your grenade when you pop your super if you pop your super and your grenade is already on cooldown, your entire build is dead. Like it's just a complete dead zone. Right? And that's and that's kind of what you want to avoid when it comes to builds is finding these dead zones and trying to basically overcomplicate something that doesn't need to be that difficult. Right? Like a good one is um using using like crimson over a healing nade if you're playing solar <laughs> you know I, and <laughs> crimson's goaded you know you, you want to use crimson because you're like oh it'll heal me on kill or you just have a grenade that can heal you whenever you want right and it's and it's much it's much easier to guarantee and, and get ways to get your grenade back than it is to guarantee that you get a kill with a crimson especially when you're in six man activities and especially when ads have more than average health and you're sitting there chewing away with, with you know, Crimson. I'm not a fan of Crimson, so... I, I mean, the, the less crimson. conditional thing is always the better thing in any game. When yes. you're gonna... It's gonna be harder to get that condition. So if your condition is a kill or a multi-kill, that is so much harder when you add more people and you make the game harder by, like, the sandbox element. So they have more health, you deal with damage. And that's when you want something that has the effectiveness of you being able to do something without needing the condition. And, you know, logic would, would take you to the conclusion that, you know, the more it's in your control, the better it is because you can get proper use out of it. Absolutely. You know, um, if you're, if your whole build revolves around, like Cruz was saying, killing ads, not only do you have to tell your teammates, "Hey, I need certain ads to kill," or you need to you need to make those calls, and you need or you need to just make sure you get the kills. Um, you have to make sure that you can keep getting those kills consistently. When a lot of the times there's just not that many ads that spawn, and you don't get any value out of it. So, you know, it's it's in terms of builds, I've seen a lot of videos. A lot of guides and people go really in depth with a lot of these build things, and it's neat. All of them are very neat. 
if you're running around a lost sector by yourself or patrol or like you're doing blind well or like you're in you're on the moon doing altars of sorrow by yourself or and there's a lot of things happening a lot of ads and bosses and stuff castellum even those builds they're great they're tons of fun when you i mean i've done it myself i full send and use all these different mods to just get one thing going right and just keep that one thing going but in in you know practically it's it's just it's just not a thing right and those bills need to stay in your mind as just fun and they are fun they're a lot of fun um but t trying to take those builds into anything like a gm a day one honestly even just six man raids it's just most of the time it's not feasible um i mean we can then... we can carry this straight into why they don't matter too if you want or finish off your point and then we'll go yeah, I mean, and, and my point, uh, you know, what I was going to get to is just, um, and I feel like a lot of these videos, they kind of teach the wrong things about these builds. They show you how to do, you know, specific setups, but they don't show you why they're using these mods. They just say, put all this stuff on and it works. Um, yeah, that's I a good point. It. Like understanding why is arguably more important than just knowing how to get effectiveness out of it for instance a big one is like why would you make your class item stasis versus your boots right all they say is you just need a stasis piece of armor and you put this mod on it right yeah you make it you make it boots you've you've effectively kind of messed up there just just by that alone because there is a hierarchy in which pieces of armor are the best with certain elements like chess pieces changes with seasons now with the double resist mods but typically your class item you want it to either be stasis or solar nothing else right and that's because you have the one cost utility kickstart and with that you can throw on like a recovery mod a four cost recovery mod which is usually very expensive but because those are one cost you're up to six with time dilation which is typically why you want a stasis piece in the first place you're up to nine um so with that, like everything fits nicely in your class item, but when they make these builds, they don't talk about those 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 concepts. You know, they don't talk about why you want different uh, element gauntlets, for instance, for impact induction or momentum transfer, and how you can get value there. You know, um, yeah, I think arms are pretty diverse because you know you can. Yeah. Like I don't necessarily think you should go void because I ultimately just I think, think so, using your class item is a better way to get your class item then it would be like incentivize your nade to get it. But I think having the nade to melee, melee to nade, and then just grenade kickstart, those are all like good options. Granted, grenade mm -hmm. kickstart is pretty expensive. Helmet, um Typically... I would say solar or stasis, unless you need hands on. Yeah, I was gonna say solar uh arc maybe but typically your helmets stay solar and and just across the board stasis if you want to go power preservation mm -hmm. um and then void typically i mean dynamos got, dynamo's got nice hit. but it's kind of pricey dynamos got hit pretty hard they've been hit pretty hard that over too. The, you know the years and um you could you i mean if you really want to make a you know 100 mobility you know double dynamo dodge with a what's the hundred chess piece gear falcons you know invis type build like i mean by all means you know go crazy but you know there, there's Just a lot of value generally it's not recommended to do that yeah and like you said with chess piece it can kind of go anywhere boots i don't know for Dude. me it's pretty much always solar boots i think are solar or void yeah void um, too. solar because of recuperation when you pick up an orb, you just get a huge chunk of health and you can stack those. You can pick up multiple orbs and just get instant full health. Um, and with Void, it's better already. You know, you pick up an orb and it starts regen. So you do get more, but over time. Um, and that's the, this is, that's the part that really bugs me about build videos. You know, they, they, they show off these really cool, neat concepts. And I mean, along with that, the fact that half the build videos rely on killing ads. And I'm just, I, I'm, I, I'm thinking in my head, like, you're you're effectively pocketing all these ads to to get your build rolling when it would just they would just be so much easier to just steamroll it all literally with forbearance 
Yeah. You know? All right. You like, got to <laughs> compete with what's the best. And a lot of the times, like you said, if, like, if, you're, in a, if you're in a solo Lost Sector, sure, do whatever you want. Time doesn't yeah. matter. But if you're in anything that you really care about, like, you need to steamroll things. That is the mentality of doing things mm-hmm. effectively. And, and it goes waiting for your, I don't know, charged uh, glacier nade, the turret thing to freeze something so then you can go finish it i don't know like it's a no like you can't do something yeah, like that and you know it goes back to you know what we were saying earlier when you're by yourself you are technically in full control of when ads die right so that is part of the control which makes your build better when you're by yourself which is why any of these builds work when you're by yourself because you're in full control of when ads die and how they die that is entirely up to you right but the more you add people, other people, other other variables, um, even just three or six man activities, you lose that control immediately. And it's not even it's not even like, you know, you're like, oh, well, I'll just sneak a kill. You're losing that control to somebody who is shooting the ground with Trinity Ghoul. OK, and they will shoot the ground over and over again and they will kill everything before you can even see an ad spawn. Right, and that's what you're competing with to get your build rolling. If your build relies on kills, and you have anyone in your group with forbearance or Trinity Ghoul, your build's not going to do anything. Right, which is why a lot of these builds, these passive builds, for instance, you know, we talked a lot about hard, hard of endless light. Horfrost Z on on Stasis Titan, in my opinion, is a staple. Like that chess piece is unreal for Titans. Especially Stasis Titans. Um, there's so much value you can get out of that chess piece and how it recycles itself. Um, and like we talked about with double utility Kickstarter, you get that wall back so quick. Um, and, and the then wall have... like helps with your fragment when you break the crystal, you're gonna get faster nade regen. Mm-hmm. That's faster. And that yeah, I agree. Like I am a Horfrost lover. I used it in day one for King's Fall. Anytime I will use stasis, I will pretty much use that thing unless I need something else. Like unless I'm going like syntho, uh, behemoth damage for some reason. Because yeah. it's it's just a, um, just expands and elevates everything you can do with the build. Because so much of stasis builds come around the crystals. Yeah, and and and. You know, if you don't want to use Stasis as an example, you know, you have Warlocks. Warlocks have access to a plethora of really good neutral game exotics. I mean, one of the most popular ones right now is Starfire Protocol. Um, and with this chess piece, you would think, oh, we need grenade kills. So, like, you know, isn't that the same thing? No, it's not. Because all you need to do is put down an Emp Rift. And if you don't want to run an Emp Rift, use your well. Literally just use your well. And as long as you are hitting something, just hitting something, and usually there's a couple enemies that'll survive a Trinity Ghoul shot, maybe a couple. You just hit them a little bit, and you get like each bullet does like what, like 33% of your grenade. I think it depends on the source, but it's it's a lot. I mean, you don't have to shoot much. Like a rapid fire weapon, you'll do yeah. that like an enemy, and you'll get it back. And yeah, and it, you don't even need like amp rift. You don't even need the well. You can run healing rift. Go yeah. double bomber and go um like something related to getting your neighbor. You could run a kickstart impact uh, impact induction impact induction. You can throw on your ashes to assets and just get infinite wells. And you can skip the empowering rift part just because of how strong and those touch of flame nades are with strong ability regen. You could even you could even put on ember of benevolence. And mm-hmm. you put on a rift for your teammates. Oh, me get in. As long as they touch it, and then you get you start getting six seconds of all ability regen. Or if you throw your melee and give everyone radiant, at procs benevolence also. You know, there's there's many ways to mitigate it, and and all of that doesn't require any kills. It's sort of a neutral passive thing that you can do. And if you don't want, let's say you don't want to use starfire for whatever reason, you could literally put on boots of the assembler. Put a healing rift down, and they don't even need to come to you. You just you stand there, and you'll just have infinite ember of benevolence. And you all know? that's gearing towards the same thing, which is about like getting these nades out. Like you can still. There's so many ways, so many more ways than you probably realized, 
on how to get a certain effect to increase because it's more than just run an exotic and and okay this is where like builds do matter because you could run like you're saying with boots of the assembler a much better team could six man day one type exotic it, it's honestly like one of the best at just being like a supportive background thing that's just great then you as the player build around what's you and incorporate the ember of benevolence into your and how that's going to help your own gameplay just like that that's like a super strong build that doesn't really take much effort yeah and it doesn't require any ads and it's well within your control and that's the big thing is making sure that these builds stay within your control and that should always be what you're looking for when you put together a build is what what are the things that i cannot account for and if if there if there's even a few of those things those cannot be your main source to keep your build moving because you, you can't you can't account for it you can't guarantee it you know and if you can't guarantee it that's it your build kind of just falls flat right i mean i saw uh, you know not to call it out but i saw a build um where he was using Verity's brow with Mita mini tool and healing nades, and the whole build was just to get his healing nade faster with Verity's brow. And you know, technically, it's technically it's working. You get your nade back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is technically <laughs> working. I don't you know. know. <laughs> Not really taking full advantage of what the exotic's it's, it's supposed a, to be doing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's something. In, it's it's you know. entirely a waste. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of lose the damage aspect, I, too, which I, is I, arguably the more important part. Be, and 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 I use this example because when you look at that, you look at it at its face value. You're like, oh, but you get your nade back really fast with kills. Well, if you just put on a demolitionist weapon, because you, part of this build is getting kills, put on a demolitionist weapon. You know, it'll it'll do the same exact thing you know arguably faster because <laughs> because the way uh Verity's brow works it works off time base whereas demolitionist just kind of just gives you chunks you know so i think that's that's something that kind of just gets lost a little bit is is people see you know their their favorite content creators put out a build or whatever and they put it all on and they have no idea why this build works and they just don't care you know and i think it's important because then when you get into other things and especially for people and that want to get into higher level play, you got to understand why these things are even used in the first place, you know? And I think we can use that to kind of segue into why they don't matter. Right. A lot of these builds um, and a lot of these mods, honestly, just don't matter and they'll probably never matter. You know, like you go in to do your six man King's fall. You can run whatever. Who cares? Like, you can be this person who's running your perfect raid setup you know, for optimal DPS. And frankly, you won't change your team's kill time really at all. Because unless everyone's kind of investing in it, you're not getting the sizable. You're still only one of six players. So, yep. that's a, a certain scenario. And honestly, like, I would say. At l like at least 75% of the game to 80% of the game won't see much different gameplay wise effectiveness from really using an optimizer because most of the time you're just steamrolling it without even doing it. throwing your forbearance and G horn and you just kind of jump around click the ground and everything's dead so why would I care about running um a good build even build wise part of inmost trivializes the need for anything ability region wise i'm gonna dodge uh, well i'll do a thruster i mean uh, i don't want to make people cringe i'll thruster <laughs> and then i'll uh then i'll do a charge melee bam hit something throw my nade and now i pretty much have this endless cycle of thrustering and nading thrustering and then and I shoot a little bit, and I nade, and I thruster, and then I 
Who needs a build for that? Oh, I'm gonna get Well of Life after everything's just been nuked by 20 storm grenades. Right? Yeah. Pretty and, much anything and... that dies quickly, you don't need a build for. You can do it for fun, and to me, that's the aspect where it, it is noticeable. Oh, yeah. But, frankly speaking, if you're just doing it to do it, in terms of, like, the build, then it is a necessity. And at that point, just go for what's easy, which is what we know plenty of people, um, one who we pretty close with, who would just, like, only ever use the meta stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And th and that's fine. He had, he had the same mod setup, no matter what he did, did not matter because, you know, and that, what I was going to get to when you were done, Cruz, was get to my like kind of final capstone point, which is, you should figure out a build that that's comfortable for you. Across that that's neutral across the board, like it, it's just comfortable, right? And it's kind of like what you said, which is like explosive well maker, well of life. You know, time yeah, dilation. Yeah, my tried and true. Like, yeah, like you should you should look to find something that's comfortable. If you're a hunter main, there is absolutely nothing wrong with running, um, reaping tenacity and time dilation. In my opinion, I was yeah, I was actually gonna say like those three. Like that's that's to me like if you're if you're a diehard hunter main and you have a hundred mobility, you know, and and that's your whole shtick and everything, and you know, you, those three mods, you're golden. Right, you really can't go wrong. Um, you know, you might not get full value out of all the time, but you know, it, it's it's it, it's just it's just there to just kind of pad what you're already doing, right? And that should be that should be your goal is to just find a couple mods or find an exotic that you like using and put a couple things on there and kind of pad it nicely so that it it doesn't fall flat, but it's also not doing anything extraordinary, right? Um, and with that, it allows you to swap different subclasses and try a bunch of different things. But the goal, at least for me, is to just fill these little little holes of of kind of empty empty spots where you throw your grenade, your melee, and you put your rift down to the tier warlock, and now everything's on cooldown, right? That's my builds personally prevent that. I don't like having everything be completely gone there's a certain level of kind of recyclability that just kind of happens passively in the background to keep things rolling. You know, and I think, I think that should be the goal. Yeah. Um, and then as far as why they don't matter. I mean, I think I mean, you kind of nailed it yeah. earlier, but I mean, really it's just like, that's what we've been saying. Like it, a lot of the times these don't have, the need to be involved it, it, honestly a lot of the times when it's easier content it's for your own enjoyment which is honestly fine if you want to rely on your weapons and just base fragments aspects bam you're chilling like you don't need to worry about like stacking certain fragments together with a perk to then give you a, a well mod to then give energy fire to then it, it, it don't if you wanted it, you can. Most content won't matter. The only time I would really say it does matter is the most pinnacle of content. So that is like harder versions of raids or dungeons, day ones, GMs. I think GMs actually are a pretty good example of where oh, yeah. a build is noticeable. Because you can tailor make it a little bit differently. Um, so it's not so um reliant on certain things. Because obviously, you know, you're not necessarily getting all the kills in a GM. So you get more value out of high energy fire because each shot is then adding itself, right? You get fifteen percent or uh, twenty percent, and then another twenty. Um, yeah. You shoot that seven times versus one hitting a drag off the bat. Yeah, there goes my stack. Right? So there's yeah, yeah, I think there's more. Although more recently, they'd be getting less because bonos are broken and our characters and can also, just do everything. It, it's also like. This this season, five out of the six GMs are arc burn. <laughs> I know, it's the, <laughs> which even does like not that. help. Yeah. It does not help at all. <laughs> like that doesn't help. The weapons are what we want. Oh. I was doing some GMs last night, and every group that I joined had two arc titans on heart of inmost. So you basically and didn't even have to play. I yeah I I went in with my my kind of support warlock build, which by the way. 
all you warlock mains crying about warlocks and yada yada and how they lost all this stuff that's a skill issue and i will i will stand by that that is a skill issue if you think warlocks are dead I, they're not go play titan 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 <laughs> titans titans are just that insane like, yeah they're, they're also they're just, just so easy but again it's really just yeah. really just one exotic plus resilience yeah and and but warlocks are very much still alive you can definitely do a lot of things with them you just have to actually use you know more of your brain i mean you take away just... heart of inmost i still think warlocks are us yeah titans get what armamentarium if you want to double storm maybe maybe do uh a lot more work i'll tell you that yeah like i i i mean you could do impact induction you could do double bomber uh i mean at that it's just at that not point, it's like yeah, Same. like you, all you can do is mitigate it and kind of really like soften the cooldown a little bit, but it's not going to be completely as like free not getting as like than most eight hundred percent cooldown reduction. Yeah, plus whatever damage increases. I don't even know. It's a lot though. Yeah, um, but you know, I I was just using my support warlock build, and I was just throwing healing nades. I just kept throwing healing nades at him and keeping him alive, and they just kept throwing their nades. I, you know, he really didn't do a whole lot. It was kind of nice, but it was also very, very boring. Classic it was nice, backseat but boring. Vandal gaming. Yeah, true. Just have I mean, it was, it was pretty great. I mean, right. typically <laughs> when I'm when I'm doing GMs with crews, I'm usually you know spectate POV because I <laughs> I just died in cruises, usually soloing. So I remember you know. one particular one. Um. It was, it was a Nocris GM, I believe, early on. We we're in the final room, and I was just like, uh-huh. alright, I'm fucking clutching this. I was like, I'm chilling, I got this. I was honestly, like, one of the moments. I don't know, you have these moments sometimes. You're, like, doing something, you're like, you reflect, and you're like, I actually played that really well. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was one of the moments I was like, dang, that was good. I played that yeah. smart. And it worked out well, and I'm happy. <laughs> Those are good times, but want well, GMs. Yeah, I mean, that's fun again. Uh, I just they need to put something better. Yeah, you know, uh, just more variety. Good. Bring bring back, Akris and Garden World. I said I talked about Garden World the other day, and I was like, man, that was that final bot that we get up on that platform, and mm-hmm. then the first time I did it, and everything spawns, and we died within three seconds. Yep. <laughs> you just, you just, like, you just what, what do I do? Over. What do I do? I mean, yep. now you just fucking there with way the horde in infinite nades you'd be chilling yeah but uh man oh that i just love that like the feeling of just getting like completely annihilated and having to figure that out um but to to really quick to to before we fully move out of the builds conversation finally i'm first of all i'm I'm glad i got the rant out because oh my god the amount of build videos i've seen where I, i watch these and i'm just like this is so convoluted like you're doing all, like so much effort and all this work in mods that double bomber could achieve the same effect. I mean, like, I just remember from the back in the day when Devour, Wrath <laughs> of oh Speedin. Oh, that was, oh, those are good God. days. Oh, what you want to do here is put on Devour. Then uh, you're gonna no, that, use Achilles and anytime uh, someone said Devour, the, the video closed. <laughs> That's it. Get me out of here. You know, Ugh. but um. Uh, let us know if you want us to talk about builds that we specifically use like you know our our dim loadouts i mean i know i have a build that i use it's like a healing kind of support um warlock build that uses necrotics um and i know cruz has a lot of stuff that he does he has a synthecration build oh it's so much fun that's, oh my god it's amazing i mean consecration is one of the most underrated melees it's I mean, so I, I, much it's damage, criminal. and it's so it's, much fun. Yeah, it's criminal how overlooked it was because of Bonk, I Bonk mean, and just, Lorely. Just, just make sure that if you if you do talk about if you do are a consecration enjoyer, just don't talk about it in front of Salt. Uh, if it's not Bonk, Salt doesn't. It. If it's not Bonk, Salt doesn't know it exists. So, that's yeah. Just around Salt, the hammer, the Bonk is the way, but. We know consecration is goaded. 
concentration, man. Nothing. Brown flame, syntho, you get that uppercut slam. Oof. Everything Ooh. explodes. Dude, when it when it hits get the it ground, all back. you hear that, Ooh, it... that loud pop. Oh, it's so good. Um but yeah, that let us fun. know in the comments if you wanna if you want us to outline more builds, maybe in like a and like a side thing maybe we can we can put together something um or you know put put some links to our demo loadouts in the description and you know we'll go from builds there. are how we you know we kind of touched on this at the in the beginning of the first episode but um builds are kind of how we keep ourselves a little bit more engaged than the average player so we have a lot definitely more vandal vandal is he has so many terrible ones, you have no idea. I'm sure you want to hear him. So you know what? Let us know. There's some yeah, cursed builds. Tell you what, tell you what, put put down below just if if I have a build for any exotic, there's a really good chance that I've tried to make something work. And there and I'll let you know if it's if it's not worth it or if it's possible. Like because I've just about tried every single exotic to make something work to like really get something going and there's just some that it's just it's just not possible can't be done um but yeah let us know all right you uh you happy with that Good. yeah no Coming i out. think i i got that out of my my system happy to Finally. i had to get my uh my weapon right now. yeah i'm so was, tired of good. LFRs. that was good though. I, I like that yeah no i i feel good about that and and you know I, you talked a little bit about how in in Vow it was like Izzy Rocket and it's I think you, you know to just double back on this just a, just a tiny bit you're right when you say like encounters are are becoming really long but it's like once they shorten the encounters we'll probably go back to to Izzy Rocket in terms of just high amounts of damage fast yeah it's great that way you know so and that's and that's kind of the big deal is just the longer the encounter you're going to be sitting there left clicking with an lfr and the shorter the encounter you're going to be doing the izzy rocket swap which i actually really enjoy it feels good i would honestly like for them to nerf ammo drops as strange as that is to say to sort of um hurt builds like it where you're dumping everything because then you kind of have the trade off of okay now I have to use my primary for, this. but it's another idea that Bungie won't listen. To. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as Aeons exists, that's a that's a conversation. I mean, we have special finishers, so special is never going to be an issue. But Aeons is a is a is a touchy subject that we might touch on next episode. What do you think? Yeah, we could talk about it. Yeah, its sort of place and how uh, how part of the game almost feels designed around it. Yeah, and and if you're not prepared to use Aeons, if you're not prepared to um, be at the top, in my opinion. At least when it comes to like A ones and like actually like. Yeah, banging out like hard hard content and low man's not that low man's you know both of us aren't really and, like and, super big low man's anymore and master master content too master content arguably the most needed area outside of yeah. day one clears yeah and and um i guess should we give a little preview of uh next week's episode mm, do you want to do that now or after i don't really care we can do now. Um yeah, I mean I, I guess next week um we're looking to talk about what it takes to go from your new player, sort of casual player, to um I'd say an above average player, and then looking at what it takes to become an above average to potentially a top one hundred, you know, day one raider. Um, and that includes kind of the things you should be looking to do. Um the the other minor accomplishments you should have under your belt the mentality behind it and also the social aspect is a big part of it too and that's something that we uh are thinking about talking about uh, next week let us know what you think and uh we'll explain it all we'll get to we'll, chat we'll, we'll, we'll release the secrets yeah the uh, secret hey, strat book I, I dm'd vandal once upon a time to join the clan 
And yep. I remember talking about if the clan was good enough to get, like, Redricks. I remember asking how many players had it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I could have players to play with to get that. <laughs> now look at me, you know? I'm gonna have a third belt in the wall yeah. soon. Yeah, Isn't that I mean, crazy, it's... though? That's, you know... That's, Life I, you changes. Know, it's funny, I actually, I actually always forget that you messaged me to join. Yeah. Roll up in our long DM history, it's there. Yeah, that's that's wild, you know, and 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 a big, at least for my on my end. I mean, Cruz will probably talk about, you know, the the, a lot of the other things, and maybe touch into this. But for me, my big thing is the social aspect and the mentality. Um, I think it's it's it plays a bigger factor than people realize. It's not about just being the best, like mechanically. So. That's your little preview. Your little teaser. Last thing before we head off. I've got some things to talk about. My life. Um, also, we'll talk a little bit about podcasts. How the first episode went and how we feel going forward. Um, so, a lot of you probably know that I'm in the process of building a PC. So, I've ordered all my parts. I will keep the list still relatively secretive. Um, on Twitter, I'm going to keep posting some more pictures as I get, as I get the parts. So. Um, right now, what do I have? Um, first thing I grabbed, I have my RAM. So, my RAM has come in. Um, sticking with DDR4 because DDR5 is overpriced and not needed for gaming. Um, 32 gigs. 3600 megahertz kind of like good upper level staple speeds i don't need the 4000 stuff and 2x16 allows me to go to 64 if i feel like i need the upgrade um uh, i think 32 will be able to handle like streaming and youtube editing and all that stuff but i feel like i want to go to 64 i can i love that option um next thing a little bit bigger um i have my liquid cpu cooler here so excited to get that hooked up. it's a um i decided to end up going with a kraken x73 rgb of course um spent the extra 20 dollars initially i was gonna get a um 280 which is um uh, essentially just like two 140 millimeter fans now i have the 360 320 millimeter fans that's here other things i dropped the other um my case fans i have three 120s here just rgb well basic fans throw them around the system they will primarily be used as front intake and then rear um exhaust to get that all sorted i might end up getting two more to fully kit it out i don't know we'll see. once i get the i'm gonna get the case tomorrow so next episode i'll be able to tell you about it um final thing is some good old m.2 ssd storage space um this is the one thing to be honest that i'm a little like upset at myself for just like getting it a little bit too quick not that it really matters but i end up getting a 970 plus terabyte i could have essentially got just a little bit better a 980 pro from samsung um same space for about 20 more dollars and it has a faster read speed it's about twice as fast and 20 more dollars for that probably makes sense however i'm not about to just go buy the other one because i don't think i'll need it i already have a hard drive coming in with two terabytes of space as my sort of video storage type of drive and to be honest, I don't really need the slightly faster read speed. I'm going to load Windows one second faster. I think I'll be... That is what I've got. Um, later in the week, I will get my CPU, motherboard, my ACE, and then by the end of the week, my power supply. There, I will be able to start building. My GPU is still in Canada. I will fly back eventually. I'm in December. Grab that, then come. 
plug it in, and then I'll have the full gaming rig set up. But I'm gonna pretty much build it beforehand. I figure that's a smart idea because then I can kind of figure out what I'm missing. Until then, as well as I'll still be able to use the computer. I don't need it necessarily for gaming. I can still set it up and do some other stuff. So, yeah, it pretty exciting stuff. Everything's clicked and ordered, coming in. Um, earlier, I actually did also decide to splurge on a monitor because one thing about having this new PC is like, well, obviously I'm gonna have better performance, and I've always wanted to have like a 2K monitor. I've been rocking 1080p for so long now. I felt like, let's try and see if I could get the upgrade. I know Black Friday's, you know, coming up pretty soon. But I've been doing my research, trying to find something with the standard of 1440p, 240hz, 27inch, ideally. I actually was at Best Buy the other day, and I saw how big a widescreen one is. And I was honestly like, no, I can't. Like, I can't imagine sitting up next to that thing and genuinely having to look left and right. So, that's a little too big. 27 inch is fine. I'll get a dual monitor display just for now. And then, yeah, honestly, I got it. Um, like retail was around 800 and I got it for 500 And I was like, you know what? That is great. I will take that. There was only one left on Amazon, too, so I felt like if I, if I didn't get it, I would have regretted it. So there's my little spiel about my computer. Very excited. I will... um. I've already been thinking about like how I can set up the stream, you know? Like I was do I go in the living room and just kind of prop it up on my like bar stool like setup area next to our kitchen and do it on like the table? I don't know. I kind of have wherever I want because I have my laptop. I can just do that. So I'll do a build stream. Hopefully uh don't do anything wrong. Gosh, if it didn't turn on, I'd cry. What you think? Is that is that good? Idea Vandal? Yes. Stream. I was actually thinking I could just stream it. And I might even cut it down into a YouTube video. Building my first PC, getting like five hundred views. Oh, why not? In why? between in between plugins, you know, putting a part in there, you just flex freeze oh, of frame. Of course. Moving the camera. <laughs> Of my juicy dumpy. There you go. Anyway, enough about that. Um, I've also been thinking about getting a chair because of Black Friday and because I feel like I think that's actually supportive. I initially was thinking, oh, it'll just be, I'll just get the monitor or the chair. Now I'm already like, hmm, I don't get the chair too. It's comfy. <laughs> so, um, I still have like a few more days of research I'll probably do. Well, probably a couple. Because the aim is Black Friday. Have the money Black Friday that week. Order a chair. Um, My budget for anyone who's going to want to recommend anything. Preferably in like the 400, 500 USD range. I mean, less would be nice too, but I don't want to sacrifice build quality. Um, But I ain't, I ain't a high roller who's falling. I did, did just order a full PC plus do monitors. We're not trying to kill me. Um, my mom recently, as in like two weeks ago, decided to change the car into a standard car or a manual one. And I didn't know how to drive a manual. So I've been doing that on the side. Actually pretty good. Not gonna lie. Able to drive myself to the gym, no problems. Making gains. Um haven't done highway stuff. Although I think I could. It's more the thing that I'm scared about is like the stop and go graphic stuff. Because my first gear swaps are still a little funky every now and then. That's been going pretty good, honestly. Last thing, this will include Vandal a little bit more. Sorry to leave you. But is our general podcast stuff. So like what we want to do going forward. 
um i had a or we had a couple um comments about like doing spotify or just about having it like a full audio thing um i will say that i have no intention of changing anything until maybe like winter break when i have more time but i think getting it on like spotify and apple podcasts or apple music um would be nice but i don't think i'm gonna ditch the visual side of it because i think still just having the youtube um version is you know may as well i already have the um a way to format it so it's it's pretty easy for us to keep this sort of um method open and and to kind of piggyback on the podcast um we kind of want to sort of field opinions on having guests uh, you know yes definitely because uh, we we're thinking you know no. even from next episode on like would people want to come on what could we talk about you know, definitely an option for us and not not necessarily specific guests but just the concept of having a third person here and we kind of get their their opinion on things and um and see if that's something that that feels right you know so um we really we really value your guys' opinion um because at the end of the day you know it's really just Cruz and I just shooting the shit like we used to. Um, but we want to make it enjoyable. And so if you guys feel that that would be cool to listen to, then, you know, that's something we can start doing. But if you wanted to just say us, then that's fine too. We're fine with either. Ultimately, like, we are still going to be able to just bounce back and forth, keep, like, the duo thing going the whole time. Um, I still think... I would say still like fifty percent of our episodes, us, um, but maybe that changes later on. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, we might have one guest come on, talk about a few things for a bit. They might be here the full episode, part of it. And we can kind of keep it a uh, fresh, change it up. So whatever you guys think would be fun, we'll we'll definitely consider it. And, Try and make a try to make it happen. Yeah. So you know, don't be <clears throat> don't be afraid to, you know, again, comment below if you don't want to comment below. Um, you can reach out to Cruz on Twitter. I know he's he's on there posting his stuff, and I mean, I just post memes, so I guess you can go there too. Um, or you can go into the community server for now. Um. Yeah. We we want to hear. We want to hear from you guys. We want to hear everything. Anything you got to say. Because we enjoy hearing it. And obvi obviously, we want to make this the best thing you can for everyone. Us and you involved. Um, You know, this is a product we're trying to make happen uh, long term. So anything you guys want to, want to do, we're probably down. As long as it's not sus. Right? Yeah. And, and uh, real quick. If you want us to make a Discord, what do you think, Cruz? We make definitely can do that. Yep. Podcast. So, that would be the easiest way to to get your ideas and, and your opinions to us. Let us know. It, making a Discord ain't ain't hard. Nope. So we can we can make the server and have whoever wants to be in there be in there. You can even see us in our little locked channel recording if you want. Our Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's exciting. Uh, is there anything else you feel like you need to add, Vandal? Um, no, I think I'm good. Good. I'm also good. I feel like I've gotten everything out. Um, yeah. So, with that, thank you so much for listening slash watching. This has been episode two, once again, recorded um, now, November 2nd. But November 1st night, Tuesday night. Um, Going forward, like I've said before, always every Wednesday, so we try to record Tuesday nights, because that way, um, you know, with work scheduling, it's a little bit easier for us, um, and uh, we'll throw in uh, some bonus weekend episodes if there's a really important TWAB or something that happens, but this way, it's kind of nice, because anything Tuesday-related, which, to be honest, 
um, in the big seasons and uh, when you know Lightfall's coming out, we do learn a lot on Tuesdays with trailers and stuff like that. So totally happy with hitting this midday schedule we got going on. Hopefully you've all enjoyed listening. Like I've mentioned, thank you so much. Check out myself, Cruz, and Vandal on Twitter. Uh, and let us know everything you want to know down in the comments. You know, feel free to reach out to us. We are not scary people. I swear. I promise. I won't bite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for um, listening. Yeah, thank you so much. And have a good one.